What's up everyone, this is Oliver. Today we're going to talk about how to use inside bar ranges to anticipate to anticipate expansions. Here are the topics we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with inside bar insights and how inside bars can be used for market volatility and market conditions. We're going to show you guys how to operate within lethargic market conditions and how to operate within expansive market conditions after identifying both with inside day ranges or inside bar ranges. So let's get straight into this, starting off with the insights into inside bars. And this is how to use inside bar ranges for market volatility and market conditions. So what is an inside bar? An inside bar forms when the open and the close of the period of a period is within the range of the previous period. So let's say this is a candle close. That candle close could be a weekly candle close. It could be a daily candle close. But what makes it an inside range bar is that it closed within the premise of the previous range. Okay. So when the open and the close of a period is within the range of the previous period. So the previous period is this green candle. You can see this close is stuck within the premise of the inside bar range high and range low. And we're gonna use this as a map. So if we have an inside bar range confirmed, this now gives us the premise to operate within. So how do you identify an inside bar? Identify an inside bar based on its period. So in the last slide, I showed you the fractal of what makes an inside bar range. And that's the next candle closing within the previous open and uh, open high low and close so you can see that this candle here is stuck within the previous range this is an inside bar but we identify an inside bar based on its period these periods are based on influential candle closes each close will give you insight into the volatility for the next upcoming candlesticks so an influential candle close would be something similar to a daily candle close, a weekly candle close, a monthly candle close, and also a session candle close. This one you don't see with a straight up candle. Okay, so this one takes more experience and this one is basically a kill zone. So this could be a London inside range, Asian, Asian inside range, New York inside range, whatever. Okay. So you identify an inside bar based on its period. So if we have a, let's take a look at the monthly candle here. If we have a monthly candle close and it's closing inside the previous range, then we have a monthly inside range high here and low here. Or if we have a daily candle here, and the next daily candle closes within the previous range high, range low, we have a daily inside range. So what is the significance of an inside bar? Inside bar ranges are significant because they give us valuable insights into the market's volatility. So over here on the left side of the chart, we have an inside week high, inside week low. And I mark this out simply because the next weekly candle close, close within the premise of the previous weekly high and weekly low. So when I saw this, I utilized this and I waited for both sides of the inside week range low and range high to be tapped before I used before I expected expansive conditions 
right? So we could see here, once the inside week high was tapped, we had straight expansion. And now we're currently inside this old imbalance and we're working within it. So we'll see how price goes from there. So when we are able to do this, we are able to determine when price will be lethargic. So if I go back to the previous slide here, since price closed within its previous range, I would expect it to be lethargic. Here. And also if we blend the time of the year, we can see that this is new year open. December tends to be low volatility but right it's the time of the year is a common phenomenon that we see every december where price will be lethargic but before price could be lethargic we need to mark out a range it will be lethargic within so we can see clearly here the range high to low here determined by this inside week high and it's the inside week low that's the range we were lethargic within. And due to the time of the year, time and price, lethargic conditions, low volatility in December, with also the characteristics of an inside week high, inside week low, with the choppiness, low volatility, it made sense for this uh, end of year consolidation. So this is how I determined when price will be lethargic. And I'm going to show you guys how to operate within this condition to find bread and butter trades. But when you're operating within this condition, check out the expansiveness and check out how price just snaps back and stays within the range every time it takes out liquidity pool. So here low snaps back within the range, here high snaps back within the range, False low, take out that false low, snap back within the range, finding fair value. So that's all price is doing within this range. It's hunting liquidity pools and it's rebalancing SIBIs or fair value gaps or an actual void in liquidity. That's how you operate within this condition, but we'll dive deeper into that in a second. Also, with inside weak ranges. Once both sides have been tapped, we can expect price to be expansive. And notice how once price tapped the range low, we basically forms a huge imbalance up, a huge imbalance up here towards the opposing inside weak bar range high. Okay. Then once we tap that again, we had another expansive move outside of this. Okay. So lethargic conditions, two training weeks. If you are unable to anticipate lethargic conditions, and let's say that you saw this as a low uh, liquidity pool hunt, stop hunt, break market structure, and fair value gap here, and you're aiming towards these low resistance highs or clean resistance highs, then you simply uh, will be falling victim to the lethargic conditions. Because there's a way we trade lethargic, lethargic conditions, and if you are expecting a trending move outside of this here, without both sides being tapped yet, then you would simply get stopped out at break even or you would sit through all of this consolidation for two weeks. All right, so imagine being waiting for, waiting for the single low, 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 high, high. So we have a sell there and you enter this fair value gap and then you're targeting the side, but you're, you're sitting and waiting for two weeks. That's simply because it's lethargic conditions. But if we are operating expansive conditions, you can see that price moves straight away we are not faced with these lethargic conditions so within these lethargic conditions we need to switch our style of trading and we'll get into that in a bit think in terms in price action signatures one 
So in price action signatures one, I talked about stop hunts and what to expect after a stop hunt. So if you guys want to do some deeper study, try blending price action signatures one with price action signatures three. And then you'll see that both intertwine together. Since inside week high has liquidity resting above it, price can stop hunt it. And since price can stop hunt a liquidity pool such as this, blended with the idea that we can expand we can expect expansive move just gives us more probability behind our setups, doesn't it? More logic, more reasoning, more understanding. So let's get into lethargic market conditions. How to find trades within low volatility and bread and butter conditions. Step one, identify the inside bar range. So the period I'm using here is the daily chart. And I can see here that this daily candle closed within the premise of the previous one. So I marked out the high and the low of the previous one. And this is an inside range. When we are presented with an inside bar, the next candle must break the inside range. Failure to do so will result in an extended consolidation. So once this candle prints, the third one must tap the inside range low or inside range high. Okay, it must tap. If it doesn't, then price will result in extended consolidation. All right. So on the third candle, you always want to see price run. Okay, and it must close above or at least tap the range high, range low. But if it doesn't, and the third candle stays stuck within this range we were determined, when price has failed to break the inside bar range on the third candle, on the third candle, we can now expect an extended consolidation. And within this extended consolidation, we can expect low volatility lethargic price action. And here is how we, um, first of all, called the low on Bitcoin, called the buy here and the buy here. And now it's at 22k. I utilized the inside day range. I wait, I waited for the stop on to occur. I utilize the buy here, I use the buy here, but I understood the conditions, okay? And that's why I simply did not take a trade, but I was expecting Bitcoin to be bullish towards the opposite inside range here. And I use that for my altcoin bags. And some of them are like 89% up, Near and Solana, check them out. Step two, the mind sh mindset shift within lethargic conditions. So when it comes to lethargic conditions, we must have a different approach of trading. Um, but before we have a different mindset shift, the easiest thing to do, if you do not like to trade consolidations, is to find opportunity in other trading pairs during lethargic conditions. And if you guys know how correlated markets work, then once one market is stuck in consolidation, the other market is allowed to move. And this works for your portfolio shifting. So one market, one money would enter one market and then be withdrawn for one market. So that characteristic allows price to be held in consolidation and allows another market to move. And these um, portfolio shifting conditions happen time to time. And this is why you see seasonal, seasonal tendencies phenomenon play out as well. But I digress. 
whenever we see dollar based assets are stuck in a range cross currencies are always expanding okay so point two switch to a bread and butter trading approach within low volatility market conditions if ends still need to be met focus on trades that pay only 10 to 20 pips or 5 to 10 handles within these mark conditions if you are if you do not want to switch to cross currency pair which is easier due to the market conditions being lethargic you must switch to a bread and butter trading approach since it's low volatility and if your end still need to be met focus on trades that pay the 10 20 pips or 5 to 10 handles if you're trading indices get in and get out and this is specifically to make ends meet you also want to become more nimble within lethargic conditions otherwise you'll see trades that you could have profited 10 20 pips to make ends meet completely reverse on you so like we've marked out inside week high and inside week low what i've done is i put a range on this and we'll start talking about that in the next slide but i want you to pay attention to all the liquidity pools here all the liquidity pools within the range you can see how price takes out liquidity pool then reverses takes out liquidity pool then reverses takes out this liquidity pool then reverses takes out this liquidity pool then reverses rebounds this then reverses takes out the slope then reverses and so on therefore there is bread and butter trades to be met but if you fail to really realize the lethargic conditions and you're expecting 50 to 75 pips with a big move you'll simply um you know you'll feel sorry for yourself that you didn't take the 10 20 pips and you didn't take it multiple times so within these conditions 10 20 pips that's all you need to make just a simple one to one or two to one within a, with the kill zone following the correct uh the ICT 2022 mentorship model, which is manipulation, mark structure break, fit value gap. That's all you need. 10 pips, 20 pips, and then you're on to the next one, simply to make ends meet. All right. Lethargic conditions is not your time to shine. All right. Don't try to aim for a home run trade because it's counterproductive. It can lead to an increase in emotion and decrease the level of accuracy in the trader's decision making. Right? Imagine you're trying to aim for a home run here and price simply retraces on you, stays stuck within you. But if you understood the lethargic conditions, you you'd be jumping inside of here on the lower time frames. Five minute, four minute, three minute, two minute, one minute, and then you'll find 10, 20 pips, and then you'll stack that up. So 10, 20, 20, 10. If you multiple trades, you can stack up uh, 50 to 75 pips without even expecting an expansion you're just working within this premise working within this framework you have been informed failure to follow this will result in a lot of frustration increase in emotion and bad trades step three when to start trading the inside bar range so method one is the extreme premium and extreme discount of an inside bar range so the extremes is simply 175 and 25 to 0 so if 50 percent is equilibrium and this is premium and this is discount to find extreme premium and extreme discount i drew another 50 percent on the premium range so this entire zone here would be premium with this here would be extreme premium and what i did was i just got the 50 percent of the premium so 50 percent of the equilibrium to the range high here 50 percent of that this is extreme premium and to do the opposite extreme discount so the first method of trading an inside range inside bar range is just to simply aim for the pd arrays found within the extremes so if we look here 
we have a stop punt, rebounds, low breaks, and breaks again, okay? So now I'm looking for key highs. We have high, high, high here. So this is a classical high. Then we have a rebounds high, all right? This rebounds high is forming this inside weak range. And I just drew the valuation of this for extreme premium and extreme discount. Then I chose PD arrays within these extreme areas. So here, since this is a rebounds high, I know that this order block here will hold true. So this order block here is the mean threshold. It's also blended with a SIBI. So if we're down here, it makes sense for price after inducing shorts in the market to squeeze them back within this range, back into an extreme premium and into the order block. But since inside weak range high and low, we don't expect it to break, we expect it to trade within the premise. This is the first way of doing it. Ex trading the extremes. So we have the extreme here, extreme here. And we have a long all the way into here and a short back into there. Okay, so this already sets up narrative. So here's the next slide for you guys. Our narrative is point A to B. So the back the, the exercise I want you to do is to backlog the available trades from A to B using the following framework. Your long term perspective is the one hour, your intermediate term perspective is the 15 minute, and the short term perspective is the five minute. So following this framework here, I want you to find a backlog of available trades from A to B. And on the short term perspective, if you can't find an entry in the five minute, you can always refine it on the five, four, three, two, one. And do the same thing here. From the extreme premium here to the extreme discount, that's your narrative. This is your A to B. I want you to follow this framework here one hour, 15 minute, five minute, with refinement on five, four, three, two, one, to find a backlog of trades following the narrative of A to B. The second way to trade an inside bar range is to utilize the liquidity found above and below the inside bar range. So once method one has been exhausted, which is the extremes of both ends. Method two is utilizing the liquidity. So here we have the inside weak range low. Notice how price gets tapped here and then price forms an opening gap right there. That just shows excitement in the market, specifically at a key level like this. Right, so we can expect market vol volatility to pop in right after the liquidity above and below the inside bar range has been utilized, and we can see evidence of this this opening gap. So, an opening gap is an actual liquidity void. So, what we need to do is provide both buying and selling in there. So, provide a selling in here, and to provide buying in there, we need to print up candles. To complete this range if this is a settle for us if this is a low risk buy for us right low risk buy for us here utilizing the the understanding of the inside weak range we have to target the opposite side now right so inside weak range high so this is a little typo mistake this needs to be high inside weak range high here so we're targeting this point now. Also, we can aim for the internal range liquidity found within the inside week. So we have clean highs here. We have premium here, which we have a reaction off because this extreme premium, by the way, it's, if you think in terms of like a oversold overbought indicator, this range would be exactly what you'd need. So you can see how price reacts here. Extremely cheap, discount, premium reaction. Just use it as an indicator. So anyways, extreme discount, 
paired with the volume balance, paired with the inside weight range low, paired with the understanding that we can anticipate an expansion when the inside weak range has been tapped, gives us high probability trading, where can we aim for internal range liquidity, then the opposite side of the range. Okay, And notice how all buy setups after utilizing the inside weak range low forms in the discount area. So here, discount pops up, premium, then back in the discount here, blended with balance price range here, consolidate, then we have an opening gap, we need to provide buying, then selling, we'll mark out the consequent encouragement of this, beautiful tap, then we seek the draw. So once both sides of the inside weak range has been tapped, we can expect the market to expand outside of that inside bar range. So expansive market conditions. How to find one directional explosive moves for high risk reward setups. The first question we need to ask ourselves is, has the inside bar range been tapped both sides? Once both sides of the inside range have been tapped, if there can either one, full-on reversal. And reversals, if you look back at the IP, the uh, consolidation, expansion, retracement, reversal, reversals happen at liquidity pools. Inside weak range high here is a liquidity pool. Okay, so that's one way we can use the inside range. So here, we take out another high, another short-term high, and we also have the three drives pattern here. Okay, so one, two, three, into a key liquidity pool, and also into the mid figure, 105, 500. Okay, all makes sense here. So here, reversal. Okay, so reversal. Now we're blending time. Okay, so TGIF, if TGIF makes the higher high of the week due to time we can expect that to be a tgif trade back within the range we don't expect it to be like this right this but tgif we can just aim for this so a short here aim for this that's enough for tgif okay but we're blaming the we're blending the framework of tgif with the inside week high and we can expect an expansive move. So all of this called for a reversal. Okay, so reversal, displacement, optimal trade entry, then you can use the valuation of the inside week. So you can aim back to 50% here, and then the opposing side. But then you're also blending uh, targets with swing projections. So here we have the parent price range, 0.5, we have TP1, one to one extension. We have this old uh, liquidity void, volume imbalance. And two, we have this other um, volume imbalance here, which is utilized here the next, the next trading day. So with TJF, you don't need to catch this entire move. You can just simply aim for this here or this here or this here. Okay. But the thing is, when we are expecting expansive moves, we can now forget about lethargic conditions and then we can aim for high risk reward setups. So if, if, we are, if our entry here is 62% and a stop above here, we can expect expansive conditions. This could be entry stop and we can target the lows here or you can go into a lower time frame five four three to one find a nice trade here um, and target tp1 or tp2 the other way to utilize um, the other way price can utilize the inside weak range 
after you know expecting a special condition is to use the inside weak range as support resistance so here we can see that price stop hunt reversal close back within resistance targeted opposite side of the range now we have here balanced price range breaks out that balanced price range forms a fair value gap where does the fair value gap form inside reach range low so this is a sr flip you can blend this with imbalances as well and this is true support resistance mastery so we hit this we have one tap two tap which can always be reclaimed then we have another break down we provide buying then selling so this is now balanced balanced price range rebounds high taps order block reaches our draw